Hi, welcome. This is Clemens at Elector. In this video, we will talk a little bit about uh, home automation. You know, I've often thought about uh, automating my home, but uh, I never undertook more than uh, buying a few of these smart plugs. Um, I've also built uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, devices, but I never went so far as to connect them together to create a home automation system. The reason was always that it seemed way too much work to create a communication system uh, to connect everything together, uh, just for automating the few things that I would like to automate. The other day I had some time and I thought I could spend it on studying a few of these smart plugs and relay boards that I had lying around and for which I had lost uh, the user manual. And uh, doing so I came across interesting open source projects like uh, ESPurna, or ESPurna and um, ESP Home. And these projects led me in turn to a home assistant. And suddenly home automation seems uh, possible without too much effort and so I started experimenting. So I installed Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi and I dug out a prototype of a Wi-Fi capable desktop thermostat that I had done a few years ago and I programmed it with ESP Home. Without too much effort I managed to get it to show up in Home Assistant and after a few hours more I was capable of controlling the relay and the LEDs on it and even read the Dallas temperature sensor on it. Now this was so promising that I decided to try out the automation features of Home Assistant and a few hours later I felt so confident that I replaced the thermostat in my living room by my uh, own contraption. During my experiments I encountered some difficulties uh, for which I did not find any uh, real documentation um, so I would like to share the solutions I found to them uh, in this video. Note that uh, Home Assistant is often called HES.io and uh, I will do the same in this video. We start by installing HES.io on a Raspberry Pi. For this you need a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. I use the Raspberry Pi 3. You also need a 32GB micro SD card or even bigger. I don't know why such a big SD card is required, but this is probably something to do with all the add-ons you can install in HES.io. And also with the fact that HES.io would keep records and logs of everything that happens in the system. First download HES.OS from the Home Assistant website. There are several disk images. Uh, I used a 32-bit image for a Raspberry Pi 3, uh, version 3.7, which was the latest version uh, when I did this. I then simply followed the installation guide, except that I skipped uh, step 3, because my Raspberry Pi is connected to the router by an Ethernet cable. When you start HES OS for the first time, it needs about 20 minutes to download extra things. If you connect the display to the Pi, you will see many uh, canal messages passing by and then suddenly it stops. This is normal because you should actually connect to the Pi through a browser. Quite soon during the boot process a web page comes up uh, saying that uh, installation is in progress. The first difficulty is to find that web page. According to the installation guide you can access it from uh, http hesio.local at port 8123 but that didn't work on my Windows 10 computer. I uh, could uh, get the IP address from my uh, router's DHCP client list and then I could continue. Uh, the reason is that uh, my Windows 10 computer does not support MDNS or multicast DNS. I checked it on my Android phone and that doesn't work either. It does work on a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, running Noobs uh, 321 and it also worked on an uh, Apple iPad with an old OS and I suspect that it works on uh, all Apple devices. To make MDNS work on my Windows 10 computer I had to create a DNS client key in the registry and add a D word named uh, enable multicast with a value of 0 in it. Then reboot the computer of course. And then I had to install Apple Bonjour. To install Apple Bonjour you have to download the uh, iTunes. Uh, but you do not install iTunes, you just download the suitable file and then rename it to a zip file and from the zip file you can extract the uh, Bonjour installation file. Once uh, Bonjour installed, MDNS worked uh, fine on my uh, Windows computer and I could access my uh, HES.io system uh, on hesio.local at port 8123. Continue the HES.io installation uh, according to the guide uh, and install a Samba and SSH add-ons. With uh, Samba you can access the HES.io file system uh, from a browser uh, which gives you access to the configuration files. It also lets you add a www folder to it uh, so you can use your HES.io device as a file server. 
I also installed the configurator add-on, uh, which lets you edit configuration files directly on the SIO in a browser, which is very practical. It is important to have access to the configuration files, as we will see later on in this video. When finalizing the installation, you may discover that you already have compatible devices. This happened to me with a Bluetooth loudspeaker that was found as a Chromecast device. However, I have not yet found out how to use it. So now that we have a Home Assistant up and running, it is time to connect something to it. As I said at the beginning, I used a desktop thermostat with Wi-Fi based on an ESP8266 module, but you can use almost anything that has an ESP8266 or an ESP32 on it, as long as it controls the relays and the LEDs through GPIO pins. Even those devices that use a microcontroller and talk to the serial port can be made to work. ESP Home consists of a configurable firmware that knows how to toggle GPIO pins and uh, can do much more by adding components to it. Components range from a binary input to temperature and humidity sensors and to I2C and SPI and displays and much much more. On the ESP Home website you can find a long list of ready-made components that you can use. Actually ESP Home can do anything you like because you can even create your own components for it. It all starts by installing ESP Home on a computer. For this you will need uh, Python, uh, so if you don't have Python, install that first. Which version of Python you need is not specified, uh, I used Python 3.8. But if you look at the GitHub repository of ESP Home, then you will see that Python 2 is no longer supported. After the installation, the guide suggests you run the uh, wizard to help you create a firmware configuration file. The wizard is supposed to produce a YAML file, but for me it uh, generated a JSON file instead. This JSON file uh, turned out to be unusable, and so I had to create my own YAML file. Now this seems easy enough, as a YAML file is just a text file with some uh, parameters in it, but it's uh, rather hard to find out uh, what has to be in it and what is optional. YAML stands for YAML Ain't a Markup Language. A YAML file is a list of keys and values, and uh, keys and values can be nested. Like Python, it uses indentation to structure the file. Our ESP Home YAML file was to start with an ESP Home section or key that specifies the name of the device, the platform of the device, and the ESP board or module to use. Then you need a Wi Fi key to specify the SSID and the password of your network. Note that you can also do this in a secure way, but for now we just want to connect our device to our SIO system. To enable our ESP Home device to connect to HES.io, you have to specify the API key. The key can remain empty, but if you don't specify the key, the firmware will not include the HES.io API, and your device cannot connect to the system. Another key you want is the OTA key. Like the API key, it can remain empty, but if you don't specify it, your device will not have over-the-air or OTA programming capabilities. Finally, a useful key to have is the login key. Again, it can remain empty, but if you don't specify it, you will not be able to see debug messages. And we will use this feature later on. The next step is to configure the ESP Home firmware for our desktop thermostat. For this, we have to create a list of keys and values that describe the components that are on our board. The thermostat has two push buttons, three LEDs, a relay and you can connect a DS18B20 Dallas one-wire temperature sensor to it. One of the LEDs is connected in parallel with the relay, so we have two controllable LEDs, one relay LED combination and a temperature sensor giving our device six components. In ESP Home terminology, our device has two binary sensors, the push buttons, three switches, the LEDs and the relay, and a Dallas. Dallas refers to the temperature sensor, which was originally manufactured by Dallas. For each component you must at least specify the platform, a pin number and the name. The binary sensors and the switches are all of the GPIO platform type, and the Dallas component is a platform in itself and only needs a pin number. A binary sensor, like a push button, may need a pull-up resistor and it may be necessary to invert its signal. You can specify this by adding key value pairs to the pin key. When the YAML file is ready, you can upload the ESP Home firmware to your ESP module. For this, connect the module with a USB to serial cable to a computer and put it in programming mode. On the desktop thermostat, you do this by pressing reset. Then you press the flash button while you keep reset pressed. You release the reset button and then you release the flash button. A blue LED will flash on the ESP module. 
when programming is finished, when nothing is uh, happening anymore in the command line interface, you have to reset the uh, thermostat. Press the reset button, but don't uh, press any keys in the command line. Now logging should start and kernel messages will fly by. Look carefully until you see the Dallas component. If all went well, you should now also see a 16 digit hexadecimal number. This is the address of your DS18B20 sensor. If you add this address to your YAML file, you can uh, connect multiple uh, DS18B20 sensors to your device. Uh, to do so, you uh, add a sensor key to your YAML file with a Dallas as a platform. So now you see, if you forgot to specify the logging key in your YAML file, uh, you would never have seen this message. Note that every time you modify your YAML file, you have to reprogram your device. After programming your device with uh, the ESP Home firmware and uh, after booting it, um, if you go to the HSAO web interface, you should see a notification that HSAO has uh, discovered a new device. Click the configure button and uh, answer the questions. When done, you can add controls for the components of the thermostat to your HSIO interface. You do this by uh, adding cards to the interface. And for each component, you can choose an icon and set the name. After saving the interface, you can click on the cards to switch on and off the uh, LEDs and the relay, and you can even follow the evolution of the temperature as measured by the temperature sensor. So far it's already pretty cool, but we are doing remote control and not any automation. Automation works by specifying triggers, conditions and actions. When a condition does not block a trigger, the corresponding action is taken. For example, when the temperature in the room drops below a certain value and it's not yet 11 in the evening, then the heating is switched on. This seems like a nice way to do things, except there is no else clause, you can only do if then. For a thermostat you would like a rule like uh, when the temperature is below 20 degrees switch the heating on, else switch it off, but this is not possible. A workaround is to use two rules. One, when the temperature is below 20 degrees, switch on the heating. And two, when the temperature is above 22 degrees, switch the heating off. Note that automations are stored in a YAML file that can be edited in a text editor. It appears that you can then construct if-then-else conditions by using templates. You can also use Python scripting, but these two subjects are way too advanced for this video. Originally, the desktop thermostat had two modes, manual and automatic. In manual mode, the user could toggle the relay by pressing the toggle button. Uh, the manual button switches between the two modes. Creating an automation for the thermostat's manual mode is not so easy, because the device only has push buttons that produce momentary contacts, and not a slide switch or a toggle switch that produces a constant contact. So what is needed is a variable to memorize the mode. It turns out that this is possible by defining an input boolean in the HSIO configuration YAML file. Now you understand why you needed access to the configuration files. And you have this because you installed Samba and SSH add-ons and maybe even the configurator tool. After defining the input boolean, you can use it in automation to change its value and use it in triggers, conditions and actions. We now create an automation that uses the manual button press as a trigger and that toggles the input boolean value as an action. If we add a condition to the two thermostat temperature rules, uh, they can be blocked then when the input boolean is true. Similarly, an automation for the toggle switch can uh, test the value of the input boolean too, so the toggle switch will only work when the thermostat is in manual mode. By creating two more automations, we can toggle the LED of the manual uh, push button. Each rule triggered by an edge of the uh, input boolean signal. One for the falling edge and one for the rising edge. This way we can see what mode we are in. So with all these automation rules, we have obtained the same behavior as the original desktop uh, thermostat. But now we have way more possibilities, thanks to the power of uh, HSIO. For instance, I added a time condition to the temperature too low rule, so that it is blocked most of the night. As a bonus, I also added an automation to light the little green LED only during the evening. This is possible thanks to the sundown event that HSIO provides. It uses the clock to switch off the LED at the end of the evening. Now that we know how to set up ESP-based devices for Home Assistant with ESP Home, we can build more of them with different functions and create a complete and powerful home automation system. For me, the next step would be to use HSAO for a doorbell extension, and I also have two ESP-based smart plugs that I would like to integrate as well. 
One point to keep in mind though is that this stuff is uh, constantly on and so power consumption may become an issue. ESP Home uh, provides uh, low power components that uh, may help out here. Also when your router breaks uh, your whole system will die too, uh, so you should not rely too much on home automation. Ok that's it. In this video I have shown you how to install a home assistant and uh, how to set up ESP Home uh, devices uh, for use with uh, HasIO. I hope you found it interesting and uh, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.